so today let's build the Flappy Bird. Bruh. In the next couple of minutes, you will learn how to quickly build games with JavaScript by using a library called Kaboom.js. It allows you to build games faster and fun, and it does that by providing built-in functions so you don't have to reinvent the wheel. For instance, instead of manually coding a gravity function, Kaboom.js offers set gravity out of the box. Similarly, checking for collisions between two game objects becomes effortless with event listeners provided by the library. Now in Kaboom, each game object is composed of multiple components and each component will give this certain functionality to the game object. So what is a game object and what is a component? A game object is basically any character in the game, such as a player, a pipe, a rock, etc. And a component is something that gives a functionality. For instance, a human has a couple of components, such as eyes, mouth, hands, and legs. Each gives different functionalities. And when you bring all those components together, it builds a game object. In this case, it is human. Now that we know what is a game object and what is a component, let's go ahead and start coding. To initialize a Kaboom project, type npm init kaboom dash dash in your folder name. In my case, it's gonna be Flappy Bird. Once it is done, cd into that folder and type npm run dev and visit localhost 8000. And we have a boilerplate app. Now I will provide you with three images and three hours audio files which you can grab from my github and put them under sprites and sounds folders. In main.js delete everything and only keep the kaboom import so that we can use kaboom functions in our file. The first thing that we want to do is to create a context that we can put our game into. In order to achieve this call kaboom function which will give you a full screen context. Now we would like to load a couple of sprites and a sprite is a 2d graphic that represents an object or character character within a game. So let's say we want to load the bird sprite into our game. We use load sprite function which is going to have two arguments, the name and the resource URL. Name field is going to be important here because we're going to be referring to it in a little bit in our code. In the same way, load background sprite and pipe sprite. We also want to have some sounds in our game and for that we use load sound function which is similar to load sprite function that takes the name and resource URL. In our game, we're going to have two scenes. The first one is the game scene where we can play the game and the second one is the game over scene where we can see our score and the high score. Let's start with the game scene. In our game we would like to have the gravity so that bird goes down if you don't jump. Set gravity function can take any value. In this case 1600 should work fine for our game. We want to keep track of the score so one variable for that and we want to have a pipe gap and in this case I'll go with 100 and 40. We loaded the sprites but we never used them. In order to use or display them on the screen, we can use the add function which takes an array as an argument and that array is the list of components. Let's start with the background sprite and let's make it cover the width and height of the screen with this optional argument. Now if you save this file, you won't see anything on the screen because you need to call the game scene with the go method. And now let's add the score text to the top left corner. To achieve to this we call the add function and call the score text in it. By default the position will be 0 to 0 which is the top left corner and if we want to change it we can use the position method. And it is gonna take two arguments which are the x axis and y axis. In this case I will move it 12 pixels on each axis and assign this into a variable because we'll be using it. Now let's add the player by calling the bird sprite. This bird image is kind of small so let's scale it a little bit bit and as the start position let's give it 100 to 50. In order to handle collisions with pipes we need to add an area component and this bird needs to be affected by gravity so we call the body component. Now we have the flappy but it just falls down because of the gravity so let's give it a jump functionality when the user clicks the space bar. When space key is pressed jump the player by 400 and play the jump sound. In case you want to play this game on your phone just add a touch event to the window. Now we would like to create pipes that are coming toward to the flappy bird. Let's create a function that is create pipes. In this function we want to create two pipes, one for the top and one for the bottom. Let's start with the bottom one. So we want to add a pipe sprite and position it 
to the very end of the screen as the starter point and it'll move towards us. For the height here I found a nice formula that positions the pipe in the y axis with a random offset between minus 50 and 50. So instead of having pipes in a straight line it'll have this kind of zigzag image which is more realistic. Let's give a name for this pipe so that we can refer to it later in our code. It is pretty small so let's scale it by 2 and to be able to determine collisions let's add the area component. Now we will do the same thing for the pipe on top but we need to flip it in the y axis and then we need to set the anchor as the bolt left so that it can have this proper look. By default the anchor is set to top left in kaboom and it is this component that determines from which point the sprite should be rotated and scaled. And the last thing that we need is to have a passed field and it's going to be false initially and we will use this field to increment score by one once we pass a pipe. You can give this field to the bottom pipe or the top pipe it doesn't really matter I will give it to the bottom pipe. Now let's create pipes on every 1.5 seconds with the help of loop function and at this point if you save this file you can't really see any pipes it is because they are created at the very end of the screen because we set the x position to be the full width. To fix this we will just move the pipe to the left by 300 on every frame and when we pass the pipe let's increment the score by 1 update the score text and play the pass sound so when the user collides with the pipe we would like to show a game over scene and we could have it like an english sentence player dot on collide with the pipe go to the game over scene with the current score and let's create the game over scene where it takes the current score as an argument and renders a text that says game over it's gonna play a sound and when the spacebar is pressed it will restart the game but as you can tell this background doesn't look nice and we can fix it by grabbing the screenshot when the game is over and send it to the game over scene and load it as a sprite and then add it to the screen and now this looks a lot better also i want to keep track of the high score and i will create a global variable for that and if the current score is greater than the high score just update it and show it on the screen i promise the very last thing that we need is a game over scene when the user hits the ground so player dot on update if position y of the player is greater than the height of the screen which means the bird is dead so take the screenshot and go to the game over scene and this is how you build a flappy bird game in javascript bruh